Although there are many aspects of Cappadocia in which we have touched upon in the past, mentioned its apparent incredible antiquity, and to some degree investigated and explored some hand-picked sections of this incredible site's numerous anomalous features. However, there also exists, although considerably lesser shared, an equally enigmatic yet seemingly additional hidden past. A fascinating area of study, which we feel requires far more in-depth study. Cappadocia is seemingly home to more than one very ancient, now lost civilizations, littered with seemingly prehistoric ruins, treasures of antiquity, invaluable in our ongoing attempts at understanding our distant past. During the following synopsis, we intend to put forward sufficient evidence to suggest that not just one advanced, now lost civilization once called this place home, but that the site was once home to more than one extremely ancient yet extremely well-preserved legacies from what we recognize as ruins left by varying civilizations. We feel that due to the site's location, it has, predictably, yet we presume reluctantly, undergone substantial academic explorations, most possibly to create a permitted chronology, whether accurate or not, for the history of the site. With a rarely experienced buzz within mainstream circles, surrounding futile attempts accompanied with supposed explorations and explanations for many of these still visually stunning yet utterly puzzling sites. Anyone with an alternative opinion regarding the site, however, one we often conclude to be logical grounded, accompanied by many examples of incredible artistic abilities, comparatively impossible to have achieved with the tools accessible to the academically claimed builders. One often senses that many funded, obedient academics find themselves considerably out of their depth when it comes to producing a solid intellectual explanation for the many anomalies we highlight. Encountering almost impossible tasks in producing logical explanations for not only Cappadocia's almost inconceivably huge labyrinths of underground complexes, some so large they are classified as underground cities, each and all hewn direct from solid bedrocks, some to considerable depths, now understood to plummet hundreds of feet into the rock of Earth's mantle. The more impossible this task seems to become. The challenges involved in explaining, and most crucially demonstrating, how these mazes of tunnels and passageways were created and in addition secured. These ancient builders somehow, utilizing enormous rolling stones that modern man would find to be a considerable and extremely effective obstacle, once painstakingly carved, transported, and placed into their purpose-built ruts, somehow becoming a working blocking mechanism which, to this day, we still don't fully understand how they work them, or even manage to unravel any logical technique possibly once used to utilize these incredible blocking stones. However, as previously mentioned, it is not just these incredibly ancient underground labyrinths which make Cappadocia one of antiquity's least understood, yet clearly one of the most important ancient locations on Earth. There are many other parts of this enormous ancient wonder that many people are predictably little aware of, and the reason for this may soon become apparent. Although underground layers, such as that of Derinkuyu, have an appearance akin to the Neolithic Age, in other words, displaying the scars of relics which are unimaginably old, although located in the open air and at the mercy of the far more rapid erosion triggered by weathering the site, and also displays sections which show advanced stone-cutting technologies, absent the tunnels, and was clearly created at a much more recent date, which, unlike the sites which display extremely ancient ages, namely the underground cities, are seemingly from a vastly different time in antiquity. Hopefully, as the evidence and knowledge regarding said sites grows, we will hopefully one day fully decipher the mysteries of not only Cappadocia, but our own past as a whole. It is a subject which we find highly compelling. Ancient Uparts A section of ancient history, which many find as their preference, 
It is undeniably one of the strongest areas of argument within the study of antiquities, which is in support of the past existence of once highly capable, incredibly technologically advanced, yet now lost ancient civilizations. The ancient astronaut theory being one main topic of interest within the Uparts realm. When it comes to certain current or now past allies, in alliance with our so often reiterated posit of the existence and the volumes of surviving evidence in support of a now lost, often also claimed, now actively hidden, enormous number of chapters of human history. It is thanks to their laborious collaborative efforts which has allowed us to accomplish such a strong and compelling evidence. In addition, the realization that much of these sites and anomalous features also display a strong evidential suggestion that many of these civilizations somehow succumbed suddenly, possibly to a past cataclysm. However, if this vast and still growing file of evidence, all suggesting sudden demise, is, in the future, somehow found to have been an undeniable reality, possibly a repeated event, a question arises. Who could these claimed ancient astronauts possibly have been? The evidence suggesting sudden halts in undertaking within countless elaborately created by clearly highly resourced people megalithic quarries which were inexplicably abandoned litter our planet. This may suggest that these uparts are either of returning unfortunate witnesses to this cataclysm, somehow returning many generations later successfully making contact with a civilization raised from the ashes of their now-forgotten world. Somehow surviving all this time in an ancient spacecraft, possibly better, possibly similar to our own modern space stations, absent long enough to be depicted by a people presumably astonished by their existence. Secondly, they could quite possibly depict ancient alien visitors to our planet either once deliberately making contact or once crashing here, forcing these entities to make contact, thus witnessed. Yet, if true, their likeness to Earthlings is a controversial consequence to said history. Or are all somehow a mere coincidence? One or two hoaxes, we feel, is a real reality. But for all these magnificent, enigmatic, and often clear depictions of similarly looking individuals, all being hoaxes? Yet so far separated geographically, we find unlikely. One must keep this in mind when studying such artifacts, such as the Istanbul rocket. The claimed ancient space module, which became one of the most popular artifacts of the Istanbul Archaeological Museum. Sought after by Western scientists and media alike, poured over and written about in hundreds of articles across Europe even featuring on television programs and within many newspaper articles. However, what is fascinating about this reality that for many years, many specialists, often talented people, also just as often funded to presumably determine an inaccuracy in the object's claimed age, did not. Not until a few years ago, that is. In the last few years, it has been that the Istanbul rocket was apparently found to have been a hoax a plaster cast made some 25 years ago. A puzzling claim when one remembers that just five years after, the space module was sought after by German and English, among many other national archaeologists, and was, for a long time, secured in the preservation unit of the museum. Was this really a plaster cast, a mere five years old when this discovery was announced, successfully fooling the world scientific communities? Or was it like so many other artifacts we study, successfully stolen, then replaced with a clear fake? We will leave that up to you to decide from the evidence available. But an argument for found crash craft can also be seen in the inspiration for the creation of things, like that of the lid of Pakal's tomb. An enigmatic depiction of this same form of technology, again, turns up all over South America, and even further afield. The Kiev Spaceman, yet another found far away in the remote, desolate landscapes of Ukraine. Clearly, a depiction of a gas-breathing humanoid-shaped being, depicted with seemingly no injuries, yet the reason for said depiction is an ongoing debate, yet due to its clear characteristics, 
a welcome member of this long list of ancient Uparts. Ancient astronauts? Or merely an extremely elaborate, highly complex, hard-worked, long-lived hoax? We find the evidence to support the theory highly compelling. One of the strongest arguments in support of the existence of a past but now deliberately obscured ancient, advanced, now lost civilization are the impossibly enormous, erosion-resistant megaliths, many far over a thousand tons in weight, seemingly effortlessly placed atop one another, as if the task was a simple one, tasks that appear to have required minimal effort to have once accomplished. Yet any explanation as to how these stones were moved, or any logical explanation as to how they achieve such task, remains elusive. Not only are there enormous, as yet unexplained megaliths all over ancient antiquity, the almost impossibly precise decoration and seemingly laser-cut accuracy found upon many of these ruins baffle all who gaze upon them or have the unthankful task of attempting to explain them. Nearly every aspect of these masterfully decorated stones, many clearly of a tremendous age, are indicative of an advanced, now-lost, stone-cutting technology. The reality that these decorated temples, tombs, and pyramids are found littering the countless inexplicable ruins found all over the world are nearly always accompanied by megalithic blocks, somehow quarried and once brought to each site and seemingly, no matter the size, lifted aloft, forming incredible trilithons, or blocks placed into walls perfectly placed with stunning precision. Another reason why stone ruins are such a great area for debate, and ultimately, a field which presents so many proofs for an advanced antediluvian civilization, one who were once capable of achieving such feats, is the unexplainable nature of these puzzling, inexplicably large blocks. Unexplainable according to mainstream academic opinion, and are predictably still widely overlooked. Regardless of this, our own research has exposed countless of these blocks. The pregnant woman in Baalbek, for example, once argued as being left where it now lay due to the incline, and its tremendous, once argued impossible size, is now however understood to have been found to have been part of a wall, with blocks now excavated, discovered to have been of an even larger size. Without question, Many undeniable proofs, in direct contradiction of the currently defended mainstream theory, which pertains to this being our first and only ever societal development after simply appearing after an ice age, this being our only ever technologically advanced civilization ever to have existed. And although again, as previously mentioned, our ancestors within known permitted history often re-inhabited these builds they often left an archaeological footprint. Not only allowing those in the so-called know a stooge to pin the construction on, allowing the site to simply be brushed under the proverbial rug, but then to simply overlook any logical explanation as to how they were utilized by said capable claimed culprits. This secrecy deprives us of what we all deserve as equally sentient beings to provide us with the truth. During our own investigative research, in an effort to identify just how many times civilization had possibly experienced cataclysm here on Earth, a question which arose during our studies surrounding Italy's incredible ancient stone walls, when during said research, we thankfully stumbled across a very special part of this surviving relic. We found one of the ancient walls had two stages of ancient stonework in its makeup. One known as Cyclopean masonry, a substantial amount is now known regarding Cyclopean masonry, and has virtually been replicated in the modern era. However, the other style is known as polygonal masonry, a style we know nothing of. How they built these walls, or even how they created the randomly shaped blocks. It is a mystifying style of stoneworking, and yet another piece of undeniable proof of lost knowledge and thus of a lost civilization. If one watches our video regarding Basda, not only is there enormous amounts of undeniable photographic evidence of advanced ancient tool marks, like a fingerprint cast in stone for millennia, these tool marks eventually enabling us to link the cave with countless ancient ruins the world over. Ultimately, 
we believe we have not only proven beyond doubt that these technologically advanced and once highly capable civilizations did exist, not only existed, but are still being blatantly denied and overlooked by funded individuals. Yet it is not only the feat of being able to cut the stones, but create structures from them of gargantuan sizes, all once perfectly refined with such delicacy, masterful cutting ability and finish, and to say such tasks were achieved with mere copper or similar metals, is a lie so preposterous that even those providing explanation must know it's a lie and this willingness to do so for funding, we find highly compelling. One of the strongest arguments in support of the existence of a past but now deliberately obscured, ancient, advanced, now lost civilization are the impossibly enormous, erosion-resistant megaliths, many far over a thousand tons in weight, seemingly effortlessly placed atop one another, as if the task was a simple one tasks that appear to have required minimal effort to have once accomplished. Yet any explanation as to how these stones were moved, or any logical explanation as to how they achieved such task, remains elusive. Not only are there enormous, as yet unexplained megaliths all over ancient antiquity, the almost impossibly precise decoration and seemingly laser-cut accuracy found upon many of these ruins baffle all who gaze upon them or have the unthankful task of attempting to explain them. Nearly every aspect of these masterfully decorated stones, many clearly of a tremendous age, are indicative of an advanced, now lost, stone-cutting technology. The reality that these decorated temples, tombs, and pyramids are found littering the countless inexplicable ruins found all over the world are nearly always accompanied by megalithic blocks somehow quarried and once brought to each site, and seemingly, no matter the size, lifted aloft, forming incredible trilithons, or blocks placed into walls, perfectly placed with stunning precision. Another reason why stone ruins are such a great area for debate, and ultimately, a field which presents so many proofs for an advanced antediluvian civilization, one who were once capable of achieving such feats, is the unexplainable nature of these puzzling, inexplicably large blocks. Unexplainable according to mainstream academic opinion, and are predictably still widely overlooked. Regardless of this, our own research has exposed countless of these blocks. The pregnant woman in Baalbek, for example, once argued as being left where it now lay due to the incline, and its tremendous, once argued impossible size, is now however understood to have been found to have been part of a wall, with blocks now excavated, discovered to have been of an even larger size. Without question, many undeniable proofs, in direct contradiction of the currently defended mainstream theory, which pertains to this being our first and only ever societal development after simply appearing after an ice age, this being our only ever technologically advanced civilization ever to have existed. And although again, as previously mentioned, our ancestors within known permitted history often re-inhabited these builds, they often left an archaeological footprint. Not only allowing those in the so-called know a stooge to pin the construction on, allowing the site to simply be brushed under the proverbial rug, but then to simply overlook any logical explanation as to how they were utilized by said capable claimed culprits. This secrecy deprives us of what we all deserve as equally sentient beings to provide us with the truth. During our own investigative research, in an effort to identify just how many times civilization had possibly experienced cataclysm here on Earth, a question which arose during our studies surrounding Italy's incredible ancient stone walls, when during said research, we thankfully stumbled across a very special part of this surviving relic. We found one of the ancient walls had two stages of ancient stonework in its makeup. One known as Cyclopean masonry, a substantial amount is now known regarding Cyclopean masonry, and has virtually been replicated in the modern era. However, the other style is known as polygonal masonry, a style we know nothing of. How they built these walls, or even how they created the randomly shaped blocks. 
It is a mystifying style of stoneworking, and yet another piece of undeniable proof of lost knowledge and thus of a lost civilization. If one watches our video regarding Basda, not only is there enormous amounts of undeniable photographic evidence of advanced ancient tool marks, like a fingerprint cast in stone for millennia, these tool marks eventually enabling us to link the cave with countless ancient ruins the world over. Ultimately, we believe we have not only proven beyond doubt that these technologically advanced and once highly capable civilizations did exist, not only existed, but are still being blatantly denied and overlooked by funded individuals. Yet it is not only the feat of being able to cut the stones, but create structures from them of gargantuan sizes, all once perfectly refined with such delicacy, masterful cutting ability and finish, and to say such tasks were achieved with mere copper or similar metals, is a lie so preposterous that even those providing explanation must know it's a lie, and this willingness to do so for funding we find highly compelling. There are many theories which orbit the Apollo space missions. However, apart from the obvious moon hoax claims, there are many other baffling tales surrounding these missions. Surrounding not only a proof to the validity of the programs, but also a seemingly transparent approach to presumably many, although we would never believe all, of the anomalies that the American Space Agency encountered during those incredibly expensive yet highly successful missions. Watched by nearly everyone spinning around on our small globe, one very few lucky enough to travel away from like to call the blue marble. There are many unexplained images that have been snapped of the moon by NASA. Some claimed as showing nothing like that of the famous pyramid we have covered in the past, seemingly rediscovered on an image once claimed by NASA as an overexposed image. Yet there are many other anomalies and objects NASA neither confirm nor deny the existence of, yet still release said images to the world. They do not deny and equally accept that many they cannot explain. The Shard this image is a 44-time enlargement of a lunar orbiter frame coded LO384M, taken with a medium-resolution camera at a distance of at least 250 miles. It shows an object dubbed by Richard Hoagland as the Shard. Interestingly, although some have dismissed the object as a simple camera malfunction, the Shard also possesses a shadow correctly aligned with the position of Saul at that time. According to Hoagland, quote, poor resolution images like this one of the shard have led some to conclude it is an ephemeral outgassing event. However, the Enterprise mission enhancements reveal no spray or splatter, which would be consistent with such a conclusion. He goes on to state, the object appears to be solid, though badly battered by meteors. End quote. Above and behind the shard is the tower another among this collection of mystifying images of apparent lunar objects. The tower has been researched and studied by many people since its discovery among NASA's images. A massive structure, calculated as being an incredible 7 miles high, this estimation clearly makes any consideration that the tower is indeed a real structural anomaly, soaring from the lunar surface a tough pill to swallow. Yet the images remain an incredibly difficult thing to explain, and the tower's cuboid feature atop just adds to this ongoing mystery, yet one of deep intrigue, is the mystery of Castle. The name given to an object captured by the Apollo 10 astronauts during the Moon Orbit mission, codenamed AS-10-32-4822. It is of a one-mile-long object floating miles above the lunar surface like a satellite to our satellite, that, even more amazingly, is possibly like that of what makes Saturn's rings, that being ice crystals of pure water, is apparently, according to future enhanced image study, also made from a material alike glittering glass. Apart from the reports of strange music being heard on the far side of the moon, a claim few will ever be able to confirm the truth of, this extraordinary object is something very few know of and even less have studied. Unless more attention is given to such incredible anomalies, 
ones witnessed by us already, and so relatively close to our little home, we may never know what they are. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling.